Up, 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 up. I'm gonna make sure we're good to go in there. <laughs> Boom. All right, y'all. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Good. Oh man, that gave me brain freeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. Sorry, dude. Protein shake brain freeze. Wow. I don't, mean to, I don't mean to laugh, but we definitely never started a call that way before. No. Mm. Is that How's a Fabletics hat? It is. Oh, that's it. He's hooked. Smancy's. <laughs> All right, everybody. So welcome in. Uh, if you are new to the party, new to the community, uh, feel free to say hi in the chat box. I'll put it up there for for a minute. Uh, also, if you want your name, let's see if I could actually, if you want your name to show up that we can actually see your name, you're going to want to click over here. Let's get that in there. Click over here. Our name on my service. Basically, if you don't, and since it's a closed group, we can't always see your name. We just see Facebook user on our little chat scroll here. So if you click on that and approve it, we'll be able to see your name. So um, let's dive right in. Hey, Natalie. Hey, uh, Gina. Nice to have you guys here. Everybody else, feel free to say hello, too. Smash some likes and hearts. Let us know you're out there. And uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll dive right in. Uh, we are always amped up when we come off of a uh, weekend. Um, what that means for us is about every six to eight weeks, we run our Intuitive Mind live event, which is a uh, two-day intensive. Uh, if you've been around us for a bit, it's actually a really good way to, to get your foot in the door and check out what this work is really, really about. Um, we always really want to, hey, Alice, we always want to really emphasize that regardless of what we talk about here and we talk about a lot of really cool stuff and you know ways to approach your healing and your transformation and your growth uh in our perspective you know um, direct experience is king and uh, specifically with the work that we do in the awareness and energetic space it's it's like being in a relationship if you're not in a relationship you can't really work on the relationship and and this relationship that we each have with ourselves is is well beyond just a thought uh thought based mind based mindset based relationship there is a, a component here of course of energy and awareness and and this really incredible thing about being a human being which is it's a very multi-dimensional experience it's not just one thing and so well, many of us uh, actually that's probably not even true most of us don't even have training around our mind and psychology how the brain's organized, why it does what it does, uh, what's the role that it's playing. If you do have that kind of training, and there's plenty of you in the group that do have that kind of training, um, there is a place for you to step up into uh, some awareness and energetic practices. And I think, bro, next week we'll bring people out, yeah? From yeah the I event? think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So next week, guys, we'll have um, people who just participated in this week's event. We'll invite a bunch out here. We'll do like a roundtable discussion, and you guys can hear directly from them about uh, experiences they've had. They can, I'm sure a bunch of them are here too. They can share in the chat box too. Any little quips and excerpts and, you know. Get any, enough. Yeah, <laughs> anything like that. But I, I can tell you, I mean, these weekends are extraordinary uh, for most people, regardless of how much mindset work they've done. Even if they're an extremely practiced meditator, these are not just eye-opening weekends. These are life-transforming weekends because it brings you in... Uh, directly into how to work with the realm of the unseen and how to how to use that uh, specifically in your life for transformation growth and our favorite these days is, is healing like how do we how do we really heal from trauma and, and trauma is not necessarily a big you know mom hit me or they laughed at me 
it could just be like, I'm stuck somewhere, right? Why, why do I get stuck with how much money I make? Why do I get, get stuck with my health? How come I keep getting into the same relationships, right? Like maybe the relationships aren't traumatic, but they're just not working out. You know, you're just, you're not in this deep connected experience with somebody. You're not, you're not finding the one. And every time you find the next one, it, it seems similar or you're making great money, but it's, it's capped. You know, you're making your 150, 200 grand a year, but you know, your potential is 500,000 or a million dollars a year. Like why, why doesn't that shift? And so, you know, trauma could be defined as, as any pattern that we are experiencing that's repeating, that is not bringing us pleasure. Right. So what we want to always look at, and this kind of lends itself to today's conversation about getting unstuck. Um, it, it's like we want to look at what are the underpinnings of your energetic configuration that's lending itself to having those thoughts that are then, in a way, controlling your actions and also attracting to you specific things in your life. Right. So. While many, many courses and things talk about how to change your mindset, you have this thought, okay, don't have that thought, have this thought. That's all well and good, and, and, I'm, and I'm for that. I'm a big pro in not managing, but becoming very vigilant and very mindful about the conversation that you're having, uh, you know, what seems like within the landscape of your head, and, and shifting that as often as possible to something that uh, feels in alignment for you and gets rid of old programming, because at the end of the day, Thoughts are habits. That's what that's really what you're looking at is you're looking at a habit that's formed inside of you. And you can always choose to create a new habit if you take responsibility for being becoming aware. Now, what we want to look at is ultimately is what is sourcing that habit? What is sourcing the conversation? Why is there this uh, like uh, why are you compelled? Why is there a compulsion to feel and act and attract and be certain ways in this world that you know we call our identity or personality but as we are now learning i say and as we're learning or have learned for a long time now is these things are completely malleable so why why are so many of us uh feeling stuck you know so we'll talk about that and we'll talk about what the work is here because i see um <laughs> uh, natalie's daughter is asking us you know and and uh we'll get into all that is there anything you want to add about this um I was actually talking to uh, someone who was at our event right before I got on this call, and um, I just I'm, I'm sharing this publicly with you guys. And bro, something for us to consider. Um, you know, we talk about healing all the time, and I even just was listening to you share from that lens, right? And it's like, and and he was bringing through like. You know, some people that, that come to this community, they're not really looking to heal a trauma or anything like that, but they're looking for enhanced performance. And I was like, you know what? That's really, really clever because we, in our languaging, we're kind of talking more for the healing side. But if you think about even how you and I got into this work and all sure. that kind of stuff, it's like, when we found this level of work, I don't think that either of us felt like we were broken or we had traumas that we needed to like really work through. It wasn't, that wasn't why we did it. Mm -hmm. We really looked at it from a enhancement of who we were, right? Like, like to, to find new levels and new gears of what this thing is capable of. And if you think about it, we kind of do that in everything. We do that in the way that we work out, in the way that we eat, in the way, like you and I are always looking for what's the maximum that this thing, this human body and this soul connection can do. And I thought that was really interesting because I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that there's not maybe like a, a trauma or, a, or even a, a hardship or anything that you're looking sure. for, but it's really more like, how do I find that next gear? How do I find that next level? And I think ultimately, once you reach the edge of what the mind is capable of, right? Like, think about how many books and stuff and seminars and videos you've you've drenched this thing with. And it's helped, right? Like, it moves. But after a while, there's a diminishing return on it. 
like the books all start to sound the same. The videos all start to sound the same. It, and that's kind of where we kind of fell into. And then we found this whole other world that involved awareness and energy and healing became a part of it. But like the, you know, healing almost was like the byproduct of finding this new tool, this like brilliant awareness effect. So I just wanted to bring that through because I actually thought it was really smart. And I don't think we, we've we done a good job of giving that language. Yeah. You know, Elon and I are, are really focused on that. And, you know, again, certainly like anything you clear, anything you clear from your mental landscape, anything that you're not uh, holding on to, right, is going to yield itself to higher performance in your life. Why? Because ultimately when you do the practices that we're going to outline here in, in just a mi minute, and you guys even get a taste of it. Um, if you hang around, we'll, we'll do a bit of a, a drop in with everybody. Um, it's all about bringing yourself to, to a neutral and compassionate place. Okay. I don't care whether you're an athlete. Elon always talks about playing tennis, right? Like Elon, is, if <laughs> I won't go down there, right? but Elon is like a, a high performer. Like he expects to be honestly the best at everything that he does. And so he's tried a lot of things in his life. I've watched him like begin many things, but then not progress in them because if he doesn't feel like he's immediately good or progressing really quickly through it, has has in his life actually stopped doing many things. So we used to always joke as a family, Elon would go out and buy like the best gear. He's like, okay, I want to do this thing. It's like the best gear, the best of everything. It's like, you know, whatever the top brand is, it's like, I'm going to go buy the best fucking thing. A month later, he's just not doing it anymore. And the gear is just like sitting there, right? But like, in contrast, uh, we, we both started playing tennis together at the same time. And Elon just, we were both passionate about it. Elon just continued it. And somehow I moved to California where there's sun 350 days of the year and didn't play tennis. Go figure. But it um, doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to Elon. But e Elon has continued and he's become very, very good. But when I played with Elon, when I played with Elon, he would like, uh, if he didn't get a point the way he wanted to, he would scream at himself. Like literally like yell at himself. Like you can almost hear, um, we call these like parts. You have like a, a, um, like parts within you. I'm sorry. We have protectors within us and we call them different things. We'll call it like a protector, like your judger, right? Your inquisitive one, your inquirer, your, your, the need to know the general, um, you know, the, the soft one. And there's all these different ways that we've learned to navigate this world and create safety. And you, you ha tend to have a dominant one. But like when you saw this with Elon, it was, it like took you back. I remember one of our best friends literally said, I don't like to play tennis with Elon. It's not fun because on the opposite end of the net, he would just be yelling at himself. Right. And so you can literally hear his inner critic, like yep. trying to destroy him while he's playing a game. Now, when that's happening, right, you are not, going to be a great performer like your your game now is in decline because every little thing that happens on the court that's not to the standard of that protector immediately becomes more evidence why you can't do this right and and any got anybody who knows in business and sports and relationships when you're tight in your body you don't perform well it's when you when you're relaxed you can follow through and if that's true in sports, that's true energetically in every little thing in your life, right? If you show up to a date and you're tight inside your body, you are like a mess. You're like a bumbling human being. If you're relaxed, which is why most people have a drink, right? To just kind of relax their body a little bit. Suddenly it's like, oh, they're funny and they're, uh, they're, you know, they're quick and they got puns and they're making people laugh and all this kind of stuff. Like you're performing better, right? Like you're, you're getting more related authentically. This is true in every area of life. So maybe you're not a perfectionist, right? Maybe you're on the opposite end of that. You just make yourself feel bad or whatever it might be. We all have our shtick, right? And what we, what we have found at the end of the day, the, the fundamental thing that seems to connect all people across the entire planet is a desire and need and request for safety. I'm just going to let that hang in the air here for a moment, okay? Like, it doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter at what financial level, doesn't matter what country you live in, doesn't matter what color or creed or religion that you have. Fundamentally, almost everything that we do, including our religions, have been ways for humans to congregate in a certain way that allow for them to attempt, attempt 
to feel more safe. And I'm not talking about like just safe in the world. I mean like safe in your body. Okay. Like just like walking around day to day, interacting with people in life, like just feeling safe. Yeah. Now, whatever it is that you've developed as a personality trait or an identity or as a winning formula to try to become more successful, again, look at it like money, right? As a means to create more safety in this world. Strength, if you're like, you want to go to the gym and get strong, like I feel safer in my body when I have when I have muscles, like when I'm strong, when I'm flexible, right? Like I, I know that if I'm in a situation where I need to do something physically, I'm capable of doing that. I'm going to feel safe. Or if I'm uh, frightened, I can run, you know, like whatever it might be, like that makes me feel safer. So I have a drive to like be in good health, but it's like driven by this, this need underneath. And so we want to get really, really honest that we're all stuck and stuck is extremely variable, right? Like there's going to be things that it's like, you're stuck a little bit. And there's things that are like, fuck, this has been going on for 40 fucking years. Like, why yeah. can't I get out of this? Right. And so we really, really uh, want to start looking at not just how do I convince myself that everything's going to be okay. Right. Like that, that to me is the same as like a seven year old who thinks there's like a boogeyman in the house and they run upstairs and they pull the sheets over their head. Okay. Like that's, that's the kind of safety that most of us have learned to try to develop. It's like, I just hope it goes away. You know, there's like wishful type of thinking instead of like, how, how do I actually work with this part of myself? Is there anything you want to add to this? Um, No, keep going. I, I did, and then I just left. So kind of slipped. Okay. So, so first, I just want to diagram for you guys why. Again, I, I'm not putting any type of work down because everything helps everything else. Whatever you've looked at, whatever you've inquired about, whatever you've focused on, I don't even care if like you're you're uh, like a, a geologist and like you've just studied rocks. Like you can learn about the secrets of the universe by focusing on anything for long periods of time eventually some secrets, very nuanced things that nobody else is noticing will come into your awareness because the way one thing works is the way everything works. For Elon and I, our, our mission has been for 20 years has been on spiritual practices, personal development, like psychological remapping, relation, like how do we get into the deepest, most beautiful, authentic relationships? How do we have just fucking an amazing business that, that doesn't just create wealth, but also helps us be of service, right? Like these are, I imagine things that probably most people want, you know, there's certainly, there's always exceptions. Um, but like, I think your average person is probably looking for these type of things in, in your life, right? Now, again, we think that, okay, we got this mind. I had these parents that fucked me up, <laughs> but you know, the, now I have, I'm stuck with this fucking mind and I need to figure out how to reprogram it in some way. Yes. And okay. Like everything is yes. And, and so like, if you've done that, I'm sure you've done that successfully. I mean, Elon and I did that for 15 years and like it completely altered the landscape of our life. What was possible, the risks that we took, right? Again, like if you don't feel safe, how are you going to take a risk? Right. It, it's, it's, it's most people who are stuck in the, in the situations that they're in are unable to take risks, not because they don't want to, because they literally can't bring themselves to do it. There's such a lockup in the system. The fear is so great. They might as well be throwing their bodies off a cliff, right? And it might just be like putting a hundred dollar investment into their, into themselves, right? So where, where most things will have you take like a top down approach, hey, just, you know, and I, I'm telling you, I'm all for it. I'm, I, I have my, my notebook here that I, somebody just recommended to me. It's called the 369 Project. I write my manifestations, but before I write them, I do my inner work so that what is writing the manifestation is coming from a neutral, compassionate, aligned place. Because the energy that I'm inking with, that I'm penning with, is the energy of creation. And if I'm inking it because I'm in scarcity or a lack or something's not enough, then what I'm inking is my acknowledgement of the lack of it, which is actually creating more of it, okay? So like when you're creating from lack, what you're actually acknowledging is a lack of something. And then that's what you're creating, right? So um, I've been saying this recently. It's like, there's there's no light and dark, 
like you know we 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 have a world of duality we're in the year of 22 this is the year of duality welcome welcome right and it's like so there's no there's no light and dark there's no good and evil when we have darkness it is just the absence of light when we see evil it's the absence of good but all there is is good all there is is light so you know scarcity is not you're not scarce there's just an absence of abundance because all there is is abundance if everything is god and god is all things and it's abundant into an infinite nature then guess what there's just something going on in your system that is not allowing for that frequency and flow to occur in such a way that is impacting your reality in a new way, right? You're just stuck in these, these old programs and patterns. So I'll give the diagram. I'll let Elon chime in here too, right? So again, most people are the top down approach. I got to change my thoughts. Oh my God, I said that thing. Now I got to make myself wrong. I was told never to tell myself that, oh, I don't believe in it. Like I wake up every single day with thoughts, with worries about money, thinking that I'm not good looking enough that, you know, uh, where can I improve my relationship with my wife? Like th they're just, it's just like kind of floating in the ether. Why? Because I grew up with those beliefs. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to dump them all. Right. But what I want to do is I want to be able to have an opportunity, which is really what you have every single time a thought like that shows up that is not in alignment with the reality that you say that you want. What's that process that we get to go through so that that aspect of yourself can get what it needs, literally what it needs to like retire itself from having to do things to try to attempt to create safety. By the way, if it worked, if that actually created safety, you would already feel safe. Mm -hmm. You would already be able, you already be abundant. You would already be healthy. You'd already be in the relationship. You would already have those things. So if you don't have those things, it should be like a, you know, tap, tap. Like, okay, there's something going on that I'm not paying attention to in my system. And here's the, here's the, the clue. It is very subtle. The thoughts are less subtle. Thoughts are like, oh, oh, it's kind of abrupt, right? But what's sourcing it is this energy in your body. And that energy is very, very subtle. And so here's the diagram, guys. You, you live in a world, right? Or at least it, we have the uh, impression that there's this world out here. And we're not going to undo that. Like, I don't care how spiritual you get, like you're going to look out and there's going to be something in front of you, right? So yes, yes. And there's an inner world, really, like the outer is really a reflection of your inner world. And that is kind of the shift of our times is we've been so externally focused in our history for so many millennia, not realizing that honestly, the, the faith, the God, uh, the manifestation, everything has always been within. All the power of the universe lies in every single cell in your body and every single atom and every single photon. All of that is deeply, deeply connected to this universal mind that some are learning to leverage and others are like fighting against basically thing, saying like, all right, no, I'm, I'm wiser than, than the knowledge of all things. So we have what appears like stimulus around us. That stimulus interacts with the configuration of our energetic body. Okay. And stimulates it, like creates a vibration in some way, shape or form. That vibration has a sensation to it. Some are pleasant. Some are unpleasant. Some feel like warmth and expansion and growth. Others feel like a pinching, a grabbing, uh, a pushing, a pulling, a pinching. Like it, it kind of hurts. It's very subtle though. And so you can train yourself to notice these subtle things so they stop becoming so subtle and they start becoming a preeminent way of how you experience the world. Okay. Most of you guys know this. You walk into an environment that makes you feel uncomfortable. You get tight in your body, but you're dealing with it from the mind. You're trying to convince yourself that, oh, no, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. The body's having a response. Okay. So when the body has a response, when the body or the energetic body is having a response, it's a sensation of some kind. And our mind, if you want to look at it this way, is kind of like looking down, interpreting what that sensation means. It's like a computer terminal that is trying to figure out, okay, what's going on over here? And based on that sensation, it has a program that is it has predetermined to run based on how things have gone in the past or how you perceived rather that things have gone in the past. And then it just runs the program. It doesn't care if you have an opinion about it, it's just fucking doing it, right? Like you guys all know you've been in a, a conversation with your spouse or a partner or something like that. You don't wanna get angry but you do anyway, and you're watching yourself get angry, going, stop getting angry. What are you doing? You know how this is going to go. And, and the machine is just like, and you're like, God damn it. You know, again, in sports, in health, in relationships, in business, you, it doesn't matter where you apply this. It applies the same way. 
And so the mind is, is really responding to what's happening in the subtle energetics of your body. And this is where mindset work is very good at bringing awareness to what you're thinking and the habits and where they got formed and why they happen the way that they happen. But where it lacks and where it kind of misses it is it doesn't bridge. And this is where you start getting a complete picture of how to transform, grow and heal. It does not bridge to your awareness and the energy in your body. And that's why we call what we do here the awareness effect. Because when you marry mindset work, psychology, positive psychology, call it what you will, with awareness practices and energetics, a magic starts happening for people. This is where like sometimes spontaneity, it's like, no, no, it's like, it's like spontaneity and awesome shit is happening all the time. But and here's why I want to explain why, because most people, when they're having an uncomfortable sensation in their body, where they watch from, where they're looking from, where they're trying to figure out what's happening from is the, is the very conditioning that it's attached to. Right. So there's like, we always ask people, it's like, where are you? Like, where, where's your awareness? And they usually point to their head the cute ones point to their hearts, but you know, but at the end of the day, like if you're pointing to your heart, like, yeah, yeah, I get it. You might be a heart centered person. I don't want to take that away from you. Maybe you have a high level of empathy, but like, you're not seeing, you're not walking down the street and like looking from your heart going, Oh, I need to cross the sidewalk right now. It's like, you're, you're still experiencing the world from this visual auditory landscape. Right. And so we're here, but what we can teach people actually quite simply it's very innate to do it's natural everyone knows how to do this is how to actually unhook from this part of your mind and go into an altered state of consciousness that by the way elon and i are in right now so it's like we can still talk we can still access our mind it's not like it's one or the other it can be you can be all these layers and dimensions at one time imagine the great masters they weren't like they didn't stop talking or like fall over and turn into like a, a a mush pile. They are just all the dimensions. They have all the perspectives, right? They're living in all of it simultaneously in the now transmitting in, in third density. So once you learn how to come out here, which just takes repetition, basically, right? You're coming out of the mind. You can then turn and look at the body in a way that you've never seen before. So if you want to think about it this way, it's when, when people are in trauma, they're, they're in an object-object reality. It's the object looking at the object, right? It's this mirroring thing. When we come out of the conditioned mind and we come into what we call more of like a spacious mind, we suddenly have an object-subject reality, okay? Which is more akin to the way that you watch a movie and how you feel about movies, right? You can still have the experience and get drawn in and have the emotions of the movie and like enjoy it, but you're not no longer the character. So things aren't affecting you the same way. Okay. And here's the thing, something very magical happens when you apply this simple practice to your life. And once you do it for a while, it's just kind of automatic. It just, it, it kind of clicks in and you just watch yourself from the space nearly all the time and eventually probably all the time. Okay. Well, here's what happens when you're able to watch an experience that the body is happening. It's just like a movie. It has a beginning and an end doesn't stick around, okay? And when we come out here, what we start kind of doing is we get out of the way of all the judgments and opinions and protectors that we have about what's happening, okay? When we do that, we connect with this part of ourselves in a neutral and compassionate way. And here's the beautiful thing when this happens is it's like the part has been looking to get be expressed without being judged, okay? It wants to express itself, wants to be seen it wants to be accepted just like every human being on the planet think about this like everything that is macro works on the micro so if you have this little subtle part of you that's feeling traumatized you can't beat it into submission or negotiate with it however you can bring awareness and presence to it and this beautiful thing that we call intelligent the divine intelligence begins working for you because it always wants to work for you to bring this aspect of yourself back into integration with the body said another way is to a net a neutral and compassionate state okay and it does this completely automatically and without any thought on your part now this is totally by the way akin to the way that your body repairs itself physically 
Think about how, you know, I have a few cuts on my fingers. I was just moving this week. I got cuts everywhere. I have thorns and cuts and this and that. Like, I don't have to sit here and wonder when these cuts are going to go away. They have their own timing. My body knows exactly how to bring them back to their original form, meaning to a neutral. And what's neutral is also uh, ultimately and naturally compassionate. Because if there's nothing added to it, it's just compassion is just there naturally by its very nature. Right. Like the only time compassion falls out is when there's judgment. Humans, when they're not judgmental, are naturally very compassionate beings. Right. And so whether it's a cut on your finger or a broken bone or a woman getting pregnant, again, we can see this intelligence around us all the time. There is probably like a thousand things your body is doing right now, pumping blood, moving nutrient, moving nutrients, renewing your skin, uh, detoxing your organs, all these things happening completely under your under the uh without any consciousness on your part working perfectly and helping you go about your day so it would behoove us to think that trauma that lives in the body given the right environment the right circumstances wouldn't do the exact same thing it can just alleviate itself and so when we do these these awareness practices that we teach here and we welcome you guys to check out the meditations on the group because we're we're, we're, we're literally telling you how to do it okay um you will see that this part just kind of like disappears. And this is not like a disappears and then comes back and he's like, yay, I'm here again. It's like, no, this layer of it is gone. And when it's neutral, here's the beautiful part. Now, let's say you're in that same situation, stimulus in your environment hits your energetic body, but the, con but the composition of the energy the way that the energy is organized has shifted. And so it doesn't hit your system the same way it did before. This sensation that was creating anxiety, stress, and overwhelm in your system literally doesn't happen because there's no part for it to hit. That's already reintegrated. It feels safe. And when it feels safe, the mind, which is looking down and trying to figure out what to do, doesn't have to respond to anything. You guys get this, like how impactful this is? And so suddenly you are no longer in a reactive state when that happens anymore. Imagine being around, you know, your spouse and they say that thing. Yes, that thing that pushes the button and makes you go batshit crazy. And they say it and like nothing happens. Like you literally are like, nothing. We're not going to do anything about this. And the system's like, no, we're good. And you're like, you sure? And he's like, yep, we're good. And you just go about your day and you can see how suddenly a moment of tension between you and your spouse can be a moment of compassion and love. You can just see them for what they are. See yourself for what you are. And that makes more aliveness come into the relationship. That helps the, tr the relationship start elevating in frequency because now you're spending more time in connection and love, not trying to win points on each other, right? Again, take that across anything, business, health, relationships, whatever you want. And it's going to have the same impact. And then the last part here we want to understand is that your energetic configuration, whatever it is, is what your reality is responding to. We, you know, we, we always say reality is an organic hologram. And it in real time is mirroring your inner world. So if your inner world, even though you're, you know, your skin and your face looks totally stoic and fine, but your inner world is in turmoil and stress and spinning and pain and judgment, guess what? Your outer world's going to reflect that. You're going to find people who judge you. You're going to find circumstances that challenge you. You're going to find everything that comes into your life that reflects your inner belief. It's not like stuff happens in our lives and we go, I didn't think that was going to happen. It's like it happens and you're like, see, fucking told you that was going to happen. More evidence, right? Because you're, you're inadvertently looping in your own trauma, recreating your own reality and then in that same loop, it's really kind of paradoxical saying that's the way reality is. And then trying to convince other people that it's that way, too. And if, of course, they know you that way. So they go along with it after a while. They're like, yeah, that's true. That always happens to Guy. That always happens to Elon. Right. And so we're, we're constantly um, reinventing our past in the present and the future. And then we go, huh, see, that happens. But again, it's all it is, weirdly enough, is this energetic configuration and parts in our system. And so when we learn how to work with these parts, right, which is just the way you work with a child, by the way, when you're trying to soothe them, same exact thing. When we learn how to work with these parts, we can make significant headway 
in very, very, very short periods of time. Because once the energy changes, the psychology just follows. And so you don't have to spend your whole days reaffirming and recreating and doing all these things that so many practices have you do. It will add power to it when you know how to work the part and when you create and manifest from your life and you create from an energy that feels abundant, you're going to start seeing things in your life happen much, much faster than you would trying to create on top of an, an already pretty solidified belief and energy construction in your body. Yeah. I'm going to let you chime in after that dissertation. Um, someone wrote, I'm not sure who it was. They wrote no judgment, no fear. That's the key. That's the goal. I just want to offer you that. Um, I know that that's something that we read in a lot of books and, um, it gets thrown around a lot. I'm going to just share my experience. I believe that that's just not a reality. It's not realistic. You will always have judgments and you will always have fear. Your mind is a survival based machine. It is just trying to make sure that you survive. One of the tools of survival is fear, right? Like think about this for a second. If you didn't have a fear response, if you didn't have the part that goes, are you sure we should do this? I don't think this is such a good idea or something that kind of gave you like a little bit of that feeling inside. It was like, uh. I'm going to tell you right now, I'd be dead already. <laughs> and I'm assuming that most of you would also be dead already. Right? Like that part is brilliant. It's kept you alive. It's the reason that we're all probably here right now. The part that judges things or, you know, I have a part I call the inquisitor. It's like, it's constantly asking, are you sure? Are you sure? Maybe, maybe not. Like, do we really want to, right? All of these things are part of the mechanism. And where people get stuck or trapped is in this notion, or I'll even call it a delusion, that at some point, you're going to work these things out of your system. For most of you, this is not your first rodeo, right? Like you've been doing this for a long time. Just in the, in the comment box, like how long have you been working on yourself? You know, like how long has your personal journey been? Just say years, months, whatever, like five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years, whatever it is, right? Just so we got to get a sense. And then if that were true, like you'd think after doing years and decades of work, like you would have made headway in not having as much, not having fear, not having judgment, etc. And as someone who's worked with, and you guys tell me, like, have you been able to release judgments or fears? I'm not saying that, like, you haven't overcome certain fears, but the fear mechanism and the judgment mechanism, could you see, is always there. The, the work that we're talking about is integrative, right? Like we integrate these parts into ourselves versus trying to get rid of, throw out or fix any of these parts. I just want to give you like a, a sense so you can feel this. Whenever you try to push something or someone away, what is the innate response of that thing? Does it leave? Does it go, okay, I get the point. I'll see you later. Is that like how it happens? Or does it push back at you with equal and opposite force? Right? What you resist persists. We've all heard this a million times ad nauseum, right? So it's like, if you put your hands in front of your body and you push, it doesn't matter how hard you push with one hand, the other one will push back instantly. So this is basically what's happening internally. And if we are in a mindset, I'll call it that, a mindset of I need to get rid of this thing, you've instantly created a war inside your system, inside your own system. 
And anytime you go to war, that's not going to be good for anything. So when we want to release certain things that feel stuck, certain tensions that I was mentioning or anything like that, it is never going to happen for you, for anyone, if the energy behind that action is trying to get rid of that thing or overcome that thing or remove that thing. It just won't. And I think you guys have this enough to, to know. And Natalie says it's so hard to accept what is. If it was easy, everyone on planet Earth would be doing it. There'd be no wars. We'd all be super healthy. Like our politics would be completely different. Our financials. We live in a reality where we can't accept that which is. And, you know, I'm, I'm, as I'm talking about this, I'm like, there's also a gift in that. Because if we just all sat around, we're like, everything is perfect. <laughs> then no one would have any ambition to do anything. Like companies right wouldn't well. be being built. We wouldn't travel to space. We wouldn't go uh, explore, you know, the depths of the ocean. Like people would just be like, yeah, whatever. It is what it is, you know? So there's a gift to that too. And I think internally, what we have learned and, and I'm not going to show this today, but like I, I showed people at our live event, some of the cool, and I've been showing this to guy, like some of the cool things that this aura ring can track when we meditate and like what's happening physiologically in our body. But if you read about the parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, nervous system, you'll know that when the system goes into a relax and digest state, which is usually when we're like, sleeping in that kind of restful state, that's when the body's actually recovering. Sleep is not really about the amount of hours. It's the amount of rest and recovery that you can get during your sleep. We have actually learned and teach people to be able to get into that rest and digest state with their eyes open. And you can... Mm -hmm live in that state as you walk and move through life. And as you walk and move through life in that rest and digest state, instead of fight or flight, right? When you're in fight or flight, the body's constantly like cortisol is pumping and you're constantly like at this place. That's what triggers the mind to constantly have to work really hard to figure out how to make you safe because internally it's not safe. Once you bring that safety in, once you can feel that slowing down, once you can connect to ground, you now bring in all this new resource, energy, and healing medicine. And the body, this intuitive, beautiful body, will naturally shift anything that no longer is there that's needed to serve you. But if you look down at it and go, I need to move that thing. You got to move that thing. It's just going, mm -mm. nope, not going to move. So yeah, it takes a tremendous amount of courage uh, to get to a place where you can let go and truly surrender to that which is, and more importantly, that which is not. And only from that state can you get here. Now, that might sound difficult to some of you guys. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, this work takes no effort. In fact, the more effort you do, the more stuck you're going to be. It's like those uh, what was it, Chinese finger trap things, mm -hmm. right? Like, the more you pull, the more you pull, the more you pull, the more your fingers got stuck. And all you literally had to do was, like, touch your fingers inside and turn a little and just pull out gently and you're out. It's the same thing. Efforting is not where you want to go. So if you've been around the block and I saw some of you guys, you know, five years, 20 years, 15 years, 14 years, whatever it was, right? Like just really take a long, hard look. And I'm not saying that any of the work that you did 
was bad. It's amazing. It brought you here. You wouldn't even be able to hear this conversation right now if you hadn't done that work, right? So like kudos to you to being someone who's dedicated their lives to find out who you truly are in there. If that work, you're starting to notice the diminishing returns of, and these are some clues, right? The books all start to sound the same. A lot of the times you listen to something and your mind goes, oh yeah, I already know that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. That sounds like that other thing. Yep, yep, that. So if that's kind of where you're at, and at the same time, the areas of your life that you've really wanted to shift in aren't really where you want them to be. Then you really want to take stock as like, okay, maybe the tools that I've created have gotten me to here, but they're not going to get me there. Someone said the other day to me, he goes, you know, if you're trying to build a house from the ground up and all you have is a hammer and nails, not really going to build yourself a great house. Like you'll be able to do some things, but like you're not going to build the house. So every job needs different tools. And that's all you want to get to explore. It's like there are amazing technologies and amazing tools out there. Do they take some time to learn? Absolutely. Do they take some investment in consistency and practice? Absolutely. Name me one thing that does not. Literally, name me one thing that does not, that you have ever done, other than maybe breathing. Everything else. Walking took a lot of time and falling down. I always used to make this joke. It just came to me like, imagine if you were like a few months old or a year old and you were like, you know what? I tried this walking thing. It's just not for me. Like, I just keep falling. I, I, I'm just going to crawl the rest of the time. And you have a whole bunch of crawling humans, right? Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, uh, not right now. So, so, not right now. So, uh, yeah, guys. So, look, I, I want to, um, I want to do a little experience with you. Sorry, my wife fucked in. <laughs> That's all right now. Um, I, I want to do a little drop in with you guys' experience, but here's what I want to let you guys know. You can you can come here and you're welcome to do that as, as often as you like. Even if you're watching this on replay, we 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 want you to come back. Even you'll see many of our students, clients that are in programs right now, come to these trainings. Why? Because we all need reminders. Like Elon and I, I've been working with a teacher for five years. I see him on a weekly basis. I'm in mystery schools. I'm I'm reading. I'm in study. Right? Why? Because like awareness mindset, everything, like even the, the, the best parts of you and the worst parts of you, you keep them alive by, by repetition, right? Like if there's something in your life going on, we learned a long time ago, the thoughts and language are more like smoke than objects, meaning like they, they, they disappear, they begin disappearing the moment you say them. And so like that reinforming is always changing. Like Natalie's saying, like, I've never, I don't get it. I'm sorry. There's, there's nothing to apologize for. Like, to be honest, even the things in, that Elon and I seem so competent in, Honestly, I get them, but I don't get them. Like I get them from where I am right now. I get them from the amount of times that I've meditated and been in classes and look and have my own direct experience with it. But it, it's an ever evolving educational process, right? Like I might have a very different definition for what integration is a year from now than I do right now, right? By the way, I, I put it up here. It might be, here we go. Just wanted to put this definition up here because I think it's, it's worthwhile. This is just Google definition. The coordination of process processes in the nervous system, including diverse sensory information and motor impulses. Okay, the coordination of processes in the nervous system. And that's really, really important because that's exactly what's happening. We are retraining the nervous system through awareness, through what Elon just called a, a rest and digest, which is a parasympathetic nervous system response. And your body doesn't do anything really functional until it's at a restful state, when the mind is at angst, when the body is compressed and at angst all the time. We all know this intuitively. Stress is a killer. It absolutely is because there's all sorts of biological and physiological and energetic functions that are happening at that state versus a, a, rest of, a, a state of neutrality. 
And in the state of neutrality, your body is evolving very, very quickly. Your mind is very, very malleable. You can shift very easily with the things that are happening in your life, right? Into something that's much more enjoyable just by being able to process that experience instead of fighting against the experience, so like Elon mentioned. And so I wanted to let you guys know, if you're curious about our work, if you have any questions at all, by the way, you can always comment on these things, contact me. And then someone from our team, Corey, Jasmine, Nikki, uh, are always looking at these chat boxes and seeing, okay, who, who asked for support? So by saying contact me, you're just saying, hey, I'm looking to have a conversation with somebody. It could be a messenger, it could be on Zoom. I wanna find out what you guys are doing in greater detail. I wanna tell you about my situation. I wanna find out if this would assist that. Here's, here's what I'm telling you right now, what I know, is it doesn't matter what's happening in your life, what challenges you're facing, or what you wanna upgrade. We can help you and support you, flat out. And guarantee that you're gonna see major headway in that area of your life in, in unpredictable, incredible ways that you've never even perceived were possible for you, okay? So if you're interested in, in that, you can do it that way. Another way is to simply go to, um, where do I have it? Did I erase it accidentally? Oh no, here we go. Uh, just go to soulsandseekers.com and we will do that meditation here in just a moment. We'll go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash register. This will take you over to this page right here that you guys see on your screen. You see a little trailer of Elon and myself and some events that we've run. Uh, you can set reminders for these Tuesday trainings if you want. And over here on the left-hand side are, are the two things that we recommend that are the foundational things that you start with us here. Okay, the first is our intuitive mind event. That's what we just did this past weekend. It's a two-day intensive with Elon and myself directly taking you through processes and experiences that teach you how to do this at home with yourself on a daily basis. And it's when you start applying this, even five minutes a day, that you're going to see crazy, crazy changes in your life. Okay. The other one, this is what we really recommend, is you dive into the level one mindset and emotional mastery. Okay. And you can apply for this program here on this green button over here. And just so you know, it actually includes a free ticket to our next live event. So this is a six-week live coaching experience with a bunch of recorded training that's going to rock your world. And then uh, it, it handles both the mindset and emotional intelligence aspect. So it does both uh, how to get your mind right and how to do the healing work that we're talking about here. And again, and then we'll include those two intensive days with us. If you don't know what the fuck you want to do with us, you have this option over here. Just book a call. Okay. So just want to give you those options. Um, and then I say we do a little five minute drop in here with everybody. Yeah. So what we've learned is that the, the collective field, and by the way, if you have any questions about anything I just said, please, please, please feel free to ask them. Just, just drop them in the comment box and we will scour them and get back to you. Okay. You and I have no qualms about, um, answering questions directly or, or talking to you directly. Okay. Um, what we have found is that the collective field is extraordinarily powerful because humans are relational beings and we have three levels that we relate to things. We have the way that we relate to ourselves that we call that self to self relating self to other, right? Like your spouse or partner or individuals or a small group. And then you have the self to group, right? Like how you feel when you're in large groups, which is like, it could be the whole planet or your country or your workspace or whatever it might be. And so at every one of those levels, humans have some trauma. And so we design our programs in our community in a way that you can get work done at the self to self, self to other and self to group level. However, why the two day intensives are so powerful is because as we've done more and more of this work for years now, not just our energetic bodies are opening up and, and, and transmitting uh, frequencies and templates that most people have never experienced before, but so the cohort of people we've trained over the last two years are also growing in this field. And so when we all come together, people who are brand, brand new to this work are suddenly dropping into um, incredible, incredibly deep states of, of healing and meditation. And so we wanted to offer that here for the, just the last five minutes. Uh, we'll kind of walk you guys through a, uh, a little meditative practice. And so feel free if you're going to join us to get comfy and close your eyes. Yes, and this is, by the way, this is not transcendental meditation, what we're talking about here, for whoever asked that question. Just close your eyes and take a deep breath in. 
And on the way out, breathe nice and slow and breathe as if you're breathing out through a straw. So deep breath in. And then slow breath out. Just give yourself permission to have a few mindful moments here in the middle of your busy day. Again, breathing in. A nice slow breath on the way out, like breathing out through a straw. You're signaling to your body that right now it is safe. And I'm going to invite you to bring your awareness outside of your head. And what that looks like is just start becoming aware of the space in front of your face. So it might just be a few inches. A few inches in front of your face, just becoming aware of that space. And then a few inches to the right side of your head. And behind it, and you can go on your own time. And then to the left, so just kind of like a halo awareness around your head. And then just let that awareness, that halo, just kind of start moving away from your head. So it's expanding out. And it might expand out just a few feet, you know, a few inches, doesn't matter. Some of you guys have a lot of uh, access in this realm, so you go really far out. You might feel like you're in the stars or out in the universe. That's fine. Different, different systems will have different responses. And I just want you to notice what it begins to feel like when your awareness is not localized in the mind. And if you feel like you're having a toggling that's happening where you feel like you're in your mind and then coming out of the mind, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to fight the toggle. Just let the toggle happen. And as often as you can, just come, come to the space around the head, the non-localized mind. And so you might start noticing some qualities about this level of awareness. There might feel like a kind of a buoyancy out here or a sudden feeling of restfulness. It can feel like a void. Oftentimes people describe it as bright or white, like a white light. And you want to notice that with awareness, as we find this space, you want to notice that no effort is required to move awareness. So if there's some part of you that you feel like is efforting, notice that there's a part of you that efforts. It actually believes it has to achieve or effort to get somewhere. And so just by noticing that there's effort, you can begin to let go of or decrease that effort. Yeah, there you go. And notice that awareness is more like a resting into or orienting to space versus like moving out into the space. It's just, it isn't, and then it is. And so from here, obviously we don't have a ton of time, but we're going to see if you can either split the awareness or turn the awareness towards the body as if you're turning around and looking back at yourself and bring the awareness towards your heart and your solar plexus. Solar plexus is that area right below the heart where the stomach is and it's right at the back of the stomach there. And we're just gonna sit with our heart for a moment here from this really altered state of spaciousness. More of a subtle causal reality here. And we're just gonna notice our heart and our solar plexus together. 
And so you might notice that there's a, a compression or a tightening at any of these areas. And if there is, my invitation is not to change your experience. And just observe what is there right now, which is that there might be a tightness or a pinch. And if you don't know what I'm talking about and all you feel is numbness, that's okay too, just noticing the numbness then. Numbness is not a lack of sensation, that is the sensation. And so again, nothing to change, nothing to do. We're just teaching ourselves how to observe from an altered state using our inner awareness and letting it, the intelligence, I'm going to call it God or universal mind or spirit, whatever you're comfortable with, and just whatever needs to happen and that divine intelligence, just allowing for that to happen. And obviously, if we would sit here for quite some time, quite a bit can happen and move and shift and reconfigure in the body. So I just wanted to give you a preview of honestly how easy it is to alter your state of consciousness. We think it's this big melodramatic requires lots of meditation. I mean, all that is helpful, don't get me wrong. You can certainly get, get more access that way. But simply put, we are learning how to unlocalize our awareness, which immediately gives us a subject object perspective and allows for a rest and digest process to occur in the nervous system, which ultimately begins to heal our body and our energetic landscape. And that will affect our mindset, the energy we output, and how we attract things to us. It is, it's not even a, a one iota of doubt in my mind that this dramatically alters and shifts the landscape of people's lives. All right, guys. So that's just a, a bit of a taster. You're welcome to sit in here and enjoy that field longer and just sit with yourself, checking out your center channel or your body from this level of mind. We really invite you that if you are want to indulge in this work, you're interested in transformation, growth, healing, upgrading any aspect of your life, this is a really, really profound work to do. Again, go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash register. If you're interested in uh, learning more about the programs that we have and applying for any of them. Um, and then, of course, if you have any questions, just let us know in the chat box and our team is uh, happy to help you and support you. If you are watching this on replay, same for you. And if you're just coming in here and looking for the replay, we will get those out to you guys uh, shortly, or you can just wait a few minutes after this video ends and the replay is immediately available to you. We love you guys very, very much. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for being here and your attention. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.